I never earn more money than just to pay my bills. So I could never save anything. Hmm? It's only when Allah helped me and my books were written, all of these books. And then I bought my books and I said, let me travel around the world. And if Allah so wills and the books sell, then I might be able to get enough money to buy a little piece of land. Allah has helped me and I now have the money to buy the land. Okay? And now I say, maybe Allah will help me. I get enough money to put up a small house, very small house. This is where I am now. So as soon as I have enough means to put up a small house, I'm not renting anymore. Hmm? Until I don't, until I have the means to put up the smallest of house, I have no alternative. I have to rent, but I'm in indirect riba. Yes. Uh, why? Why do I have anything to do with the owner? He's paying riba. I got nothing to do. When judgment day, I'm not going to judge for what he does. I'm going to pay rent. Yeah, the owner has entered into direct riba, so the owner will have to answer for that contract with the bank. Okay. But I must not close my eyes to the fact that I am not paying the market rental value. If the economy was not based on riba, the rent that I would be paying would be maybe six or seven hundred dollars a month. But because the, the house was bought with a bank loan on interest, the market rental value has gone up. You see? So I have to recognize that I am indirectly in riba, but because I have no alternative, I don't have the means to be able to get a home of my own, even the smallest one, I have to stay with the lesser evil. But as soon as I get the smallest home, I get out of even the lesser evil and I have no riba, yes. The question is, in a business transaction, you have the possibility of a profit or a loss. In a riba transaction, there is no possibility of a loss. What I could have done was to say not only is the bank immunized from loss, but the bank also minimizes to the minimum extent possible the possibility of a loss. So you have to bring collateral. You have to sign a mortgage. Mm -hmm. So that in the event that you default on your contract with the bank, the bank can seize your property, seize whatever has been mortgaged, and ensure that the bank does not suffer loss. In fact, when the bank takes your house, they usually sell it with a sweetheart deal. So your bank does not care to sell your house at the market value of the house. And you have to pay the bank whatever is outstanding on the loan, even for the future, that you're not using. Even that has to be paid. And then if there's anything left, that you'll get. Yes? I think you better use the microphone so that everybody can hear. Is it halal? to buy and sell shares in a stock market. At the back of my book on the prohibition of riba in the Quran and Sunnah, the big book, you will see a section in which there are questions and answers. The popularly que asked questions. Among them is this question. So you'll see my answer there in that section of the book. <coughs> a stock market in an economy which is not based on riba is a halal institution. In Islam we have a transaction which is called mudaraba. Excuse me. I have capital. I would like to invest it. You have a business. You manufacture carpets. You import carpets from Iran. You have a shipment of carpets coming for which you have to pay a hundred thousand dollars. 
instead of going to the bank to borrow the hundred thousand to pay okay I say to you I will invest in your business in insofar as this shipment is concerned so I give you the capital but I am not involved in the business itself you are in charge of the business when the carpets arrive if they are sold and uh, we make a profit from that I share with you in the profit that's called mudaraba this is about the same principle involved in the stock market that the business has a certain value and you divide that value into parts and you buy now a part of the business if the business makes a profit then you get a share in the profit the business suffers a loss you share in the loss by investing by buying shares in this company you are not yourself involved in running the company do you have a shareholders meeting yes in which you uh, adopt policies and so on but you're not involved in the direct running of the business but when the stock market is not operating free from riba or free from haram then we have problems I'm buying shares in Microsoft and Microsoft is producing uh, computers and software and so on and we uh, said there's nothing haram in this okay all right if we make an examination of all the products and we find there's nothing haram in it we have to ask ourselves now is Microsoft borrowing and lending money on interest if Microsoft is itself borrowing and lending money on interest then it will be haram for me to invest in Microsoft if you can find any company in the stock market which is not borrowing or lending on interest you better look at it very carefully because it's not going to last for long oh no you're not supposed to exist they will destroy you as soon as they know that you are a company not borrowing and lending on interest mm -hmm. secondly you have to look at the product that the company is manufacturing the company is manufacturing alcohol mm -hmm. and you invest in that company then of course the profits so the dividends paid will be haram for you the third and perhaps most difficult part of all in analyzing today's stock market is that the value of a company and therefore the value of its shares is subject to speculative attacks hmm? there's something called the grapevine <laughs> and news travels through the grapevine and the reason why we make all these contributions to this political party and that political party and this fellow running for mayor and this fellow running for municipal councillor is because we are making investments to get news information information means money in the market mm -hmm. we want access to information this is called insider trading the insider trading is what really is reaping all the profits in the stock market and the rest are only donkeys <laughs> they're just donkeys in the market mm -hmm. the rest are there to make the stock market look civilized and look respectable while the insiders are ripping off the market speculative transaction is a transaction in which you buy anticipating that the price would rise hmm? when it rises you then sell and you make a killing or you sell anticipating that the price would fall and when it falls you buy back and you make a killing hmm? if your analysis is based on on valid economic criteria hmm? 
valid economic criteria, then there is no hurma in buying because I believe property rises, property prices are going to rise or there's going to be a greater demand for this and so on. And that's a legitimate profit. But when you're purely speculating, it now becomes a, a, a cousin of gambling. And that unfortunately is the stock market today and the currency market today. It is a big Las Vegas all around the world. Okay, I'm sorry this answer had to take so long. You have a question? Mashallah, come on. How can it be possible to hope that God